Okay, there were some questions about how I bind up my yarns for, for skeining and how to untie them without tangling as you want to make them into a center pull ball. So I've already skeined up everything I need to skein up. So we're going to use this ball of clown barf, really disgusting looking leftover ball. We're going to use this and pretend that this is a hank of newly dyed yarn just for the sake of showing you what it is that I do. All right. So, what I do is first I secure it on my little rubber band thing that's right here. And I wind it up. Windy, 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 windy. And I'm going rather quickly, which does add a bit of tension and stretch into the yarn, but because I'm not leaving it on the skein winder, the stretch will be released almost as soon as I'm done. And you'll you'll hear about stretch in just a moment. Okay, now I'm at the end of the clown barf. And we have a knot here. Dirty word. Okay. So here's where I started and here is the end of the hank. I need to make at least three bindings or ties around it to hold the hank in place. So you notice here's one. I go a third past that mark and I do a quick in and out figure eight and I bring it under that and I go to the next third right here and I make another quick little in and out figure eight knot and I'm not tying a knot I'm just wrapping it around and binding it and carrying the yarn to the next point so here we are back at the top and here is the end so I'm going to do a figure eight there as well like that I'm going to bring that around through and now I have both ends at the same place and I do a tight overhand knot. Just like that. And usually I cut the ends and I use this part here, the little snippy part, for the tag. But we're not putting a tag on these. So that's how I do it. Each hang that you get from me will have a tied knot and two uh, figure eight bindings wrap around just to hold them in place. And then I will wind them up like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I put, put, take a little pokey thing out and I snug it down. And this is what you normally get from me. Now, if you want to make it into a center pole ball, you get your skein winder, such as I have here, and it's not tall enough. Let me adjust the camera so that it goes down to where it needs to go. All right, so you've got your skein winder here, and I'm going to undo the, the hank that I made, and I'm going to find those three marks. There's one, and there's two, and there's three. And I need to make sure that there are no cross wires or cross strands. Sometimes you get into a scramble like this and whoever manufactures it, they should always have at least three bindings. But that looks like a mess. You can't deal with this. So what you do is you put it on your hands and roll, 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 and it will come back out to its original shape as it should. So then you mount it on the swift, like this, and make sure it's all on there correctly, nothing crossing, nothing going crazy. You find the knot that I put into it, and then you find your scissors. At, make sure that everything is inside the swift. Then you gently cut the knot. And it's not always clear which direction you need to go with it. So take both ends of 
of your knot and you'll find that one end leave that hanging loose over here one end simply passes under a binding so that's this is not the end that you want you want the other end and you'll see that it comes to one of the first bindings you pull it out this way and then you pull it out this way and that one is now released and then you follow it back and there's the this second one and you do it in the same way you release this and then you come over here and you release it from the other side and make sure you're pulling the loose end not the binding not the uh, inward end and now you're you are completely free and it's not tangled and as long as I'm showing you this when you're working with a, a ball winder a center pole ball winder put your put your thread or your yarn into the top slot with about a two inch tail over here and begin slowly winding it to hold that tail in place and you can go as quickly or as slowly as you want I like to do the first winding quickly just to get it in place and you can see I'm going fairly quickly I'm keeping an even tension on it and getting stuck every now and again but trying to keep going and when it is all completely done which it will be in just a moment we'll have a very snug center pull ball and that's not really what you want you don't want it too tight because if you leave it stretched that way it will take out some of the stretch in the yarn. You want your yarn to be stretchy. So what you do is, after your center pull ball is started, or is wound up, that's firm. We don't want firm. We want soft and smooshy so that there is no tension that is being kept on the ball any longer than necessary. So then we wind it up again, more gently this time. And the second winding, even if you're going at the same speed, for some reason, the second winding makes it less tense, less stretched, less, less stretched out. And you can tell that I'm not working from the script here. I'm just kind of ad-libbing it as we go. Um, this second winding will ensure that your ball stays in place, but that it is not kept at a hard tension or a hard stretch. Because if you want to store this for a while, if you leave it stretched out for too long, it will not go back to its original size and shape. Alright, so there we have the center pull ball. And you take this bit by, with your thumbs to hold on to the end. And then gently lift the ball off. Make sure you've got your end there. And you wrap this part once, twice around. And tuck it in and now you can knit and it's a lot more squishy and softer so that's how you do it I hope that was clear and I hope by the next time I do some of these I will have a better script and a better camera talk to you later bye